The Bible, Bible will carry you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I believe that completely all through my life. You know, I got saved when I was 15 years old. And God has been faithful to me all these years. Um, there were good times and bad times. In spite of all that, God has been wonderful to me. Hallelujah. So uh, from age 19 onwards, I have uh, made it a point to begin to serve the Lord because I had a call to go into the ministry. So I prepared myself for six years studying the Word of God and Word of God alone so that God can prepare me. So the Word of God, always when you study and read, the Word of God prepares you. Praise the Lord. It changes you. Bible says in Psalm 119, Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. And so, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is just one example of what Satan is doing to the next generation. So just continue to pray. You know, uh, it's not easy. Jesus said some of the spirits are not going to go just prayer. Fasting and prayer is required. And uh, so thank God for each and every one of you to be in the house of God. Have a compassion in your hearts to pray for people who are going through difficult times. You know, yes. Pastor, one of the things that God has impressed on my heart this new year is that chains are going to be broken. Yes. We're seeing examples right now, this morning, chains, and it just keeps going over and over in my mind, chains are going to be broken. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm claiming that for this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, God set us free. How many of you feel that God set you free? Oh. How many of you know that he has set you free, right? Praise the Lord. If it was not for Jesus, I do not know where I would be. I would have been yeah. dead and gone a long time ago. I would have been dead because of my own sins yeah. and my own stupidity. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It is because of His grace yes. and mercy that I'm saved and set free. And I'm standing before you. You know, we're sinners saved yeah. by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so His mercy is so abundant. His grace is so beyond our comprehension. Yeah. So I thank God for His presence in all of our lives. I wanted to speak to you this morning from the Word of God. Uh, turn with me to Psalm 121. Psalm 121. This psalm is a song of the saints, which means people when they people of Israel when they go towards Jerusalem as they travel for the festival, they sing this kind of song. So there are so many songs of the saints. They are ascending into uh, the the what do you call the Zion, Mount Zion. They go towards Jerusalem to worship the Lord. And these are the songs. One of the songs is uh, Psalm 121, and look at verse one. And two, it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So there's a question and there's an answer. Hallelujah. You know, if you have a question about who can help you right here in this psalm, there's an answer for it. It says, my help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. So what I have to do, I have to lift my eyes to the hills. I have to lift my eyes to the presence of the Lord and the Lord who created the heavens and earth and he will be able to help me. One of the important thing in this year, 2023 is that God wants us to grow a little more stronger and deeper in calling on the Lord. In other words, God wants us to become prayer warriors. Hallelujah. You know what? Bible says prayer is very important. From the beginning, you see that God's people sought after God. When they were troubled, they sought after God. When they were in sick situation, they called on God. And so whenever they called on God, God began to meet their needs. 
and come down to help them. In the Old Testament, we see God himself wants to come and dwell among them in the tabernacle and wants to bless them, to provide for them in every possible way. But later, Jesus has come into this world. The Son of God himself has come into this world so that he can turn each and every one of us to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When Jesus talks about, you know, his temple, when he went to Jerusalem in the temple and he saw people were having shops everywhere. There was a lot of business going around in the temple area. And Jesus got so mad. That's the one time that Jesus was really, really mad. And, and he went and toppled all these people who were trying to make the house of God. He said, my father's house will be called a house of God for what? Prayer. For prayer for all people. And so the importance in the word of God is calling us to grow a little more deeper into become a prayer warrior. Pastor, I, I wanted to read some books about prayer. Okay, you can read so many books about prayer, but the best way to become a prayer warrior is to what? Pray. Start praying. Hallelujah. Start praying. You know, begin to have a habit from the beginning of this year itself. You know, just few days have gone by and we are here. One week passed by before we know it, right? The earthquake happened and we all talked about the earthquake and here we are next Sunday. So time will go on and on and on before you know it. You know, days will pass by. So we have to make it a point that I wanted to grow to become a prayer warrior. You can start not only pray for yourself, you can pray for your husband or wife, you can pray for your children, you can, I mean that's a lifelong ministry I'm talking about, praying for your own children, you know, our children are, you know, ministering in different places, Abraham and uh, uh, their family are in Turkey ministering to the Turkish men. And they are coming back, you know, uh, probably February, the second week, they are planning to be back. And they will be here raising funds to go back again. They are especially working among the Turkmenistan people and to, uh, to minister to them about Jesus so that they can change their hearts to follow the Lord. It's a hard work, but God calls people. That cannot be done without all of us joining together in our day-to-day -day life to pray for missionaries. Pray for the missionaries that's on the board on the other side that we support as a church. We have a responsibility to pray. So you pray for yourself, you pray for your wife, a spouse, and you pray for your children, and you begin to pray for your neighbors, right? Oh, neighbor is not my business. No, we have a responsibility to pray for your own neighbors, right? Jesus said, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then what? Love, one. love your neighbor as yourself. No. So we have a responsibility to love. The better way to show love to your neighbor who lives right be before you or just beside you is to pray unto the Lord for them. If they are not saved, pray that so that they can get saved. Praise the Lord. Not only just uh, pray, but also show the love that God has poured in your heart to show that you are a different person. You are not same as the worldly person. You are a person that God has poured His love in you so that you can be a person who loves your neighbor. So we have a responsibility to pray for our neighbors. What about our town? We have a responsibility to pray for our town. Hallelujah. We have a responsibility to pray for our, our county. We have a responsibility to pray for our state. state. Think about it. We have a responsibility. Bible says it is the duty of every believer to pray for the place that God has placed you. Think about it. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, and then I will hear from heaven. And then what? I will heal their lands. That can only happen when people of God begin to recognize the importance of prayer. So pray for yourself. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren if you're blessed. And then pray for your neighbor. Pray for your community. Pray for your town. Pray for your, your uh, state. 
And not only pray for your state, you are in this beautiful land that God has blessed in every possible way. Pray that the land can be blessed. Hallelujah. When we pray, God blesses people. God blesses the land. The authorities will be blessed and they will follow God. It all starts going back to prayer. When we don't pray, the plan of the devil will be accomplished. Amen. When we pray, the plan of God will be accomplished. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus taught us to pray this way. Let your will be done as it was in heaven. Let it be on this earth. He said that. You know, he said this is the prayer that you have to pray. Heavenly Father. Father, uh, you know, how it goes, Ruby? Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Then on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. It is our duty to pray for the land that God has placed us in. We have a responsibility to increase our prayer. You know, the Bible has so many examples of people who pray unto the Lord. There's one person that specially Bible mentions about a prayer warrior. His name is Elijah. Elijah was considered as an important prayer warrior. You know, there are so many prophets in the, in the Old Testament that we can read about, including Moses and David and so many others, that uh, they have written down so many things, writing prophets. But Elijah was not a writing prophet. He's, his prophet uh, ministry is that he will go and preach the word. And he don't write it down. And somebody else wrote down what Elijah has done. So we have all this information. There is four important things I want you to take it to your home. Take it to your heart uh, from this message today. Four things about Elijah. Number one, if you turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 17. Elijah is introduced right here. Elijah is introduced, 1 Kings chapter 17. It says, Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. This is what Elijah about Elijah was written down. Even though Elijah has not written down anything about himself, but about Elijah has been written down. Now, if you ask me a question, what is the identity of this prophet? His identity is not even found in the Bible. Do you know who is the father of Elijah? Nobody knows. Who is the mother of Elijah? Nobody knows. And even the town that he is from, Nobody knows. Do you know today the, psycho the uh, people who are digging archaeologists archaeology. and they are still trying to find the place that Elijah is from. Nobody knows. They know it is from the area of Gilead which is the eastern side of Jordan River. But there was no way to find the particular place that Elijah is from. So what is the identity? He is not from a royal uh, family. He is not from a kingly family. He is not from a priestly family. He is not from a prophet's family. So what is the identity of this man Elijah? So identity is very important. The only identity I see here is that he was called by God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the identity. He calls himself, I am the man of God. I am the man of God. Why? Because God has just took him out of wherever he was from and he gave him an identity. Everybody knows about Elijah now. Hallelujah. It is not because of his hometown. It is not because of his family line. It is because that God has called him. That is his identity. What is your identity today? Right? Your identity has to be in the Lord. Hallelujah. You are called to be a Christian. I am a Christian. I say, you know, before people know about anything else, I rather tell them, I am a believer in the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He has saved me. Paul says this. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I live. Who lives in me? Christ. Christ lives in me. That means Paul says, I am dead. <laughs> right? I am dead. I was dead in sin. When I'm dead, then Christ 
saved me and set me free. Now my life is hidden in him. Now the life that I live, it's not me living. It is Christ lives in me. That is the identity that Paul talks about. It's not from his family line. It is not about anything else. It is about Christ lives in Paul. Hallelujah. Christ lives in Paul. And that is the word. Everything changes about Paul. It is the same way for you and me. We are not the same old, same old. We are changed. Hallelujah. If the Son set you free, you are free indeed. He has freed you. He has saved you. He has set you free. And you are a special person. Then no longer you are in the old. You are a new creation. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is what? New a new creation. It's not that same old Jay living. My life is dead and, and my life is hidden in Christ. And now the life that I live, you live, it is Christ lives in us. Our identity itself is the Lord. So Elijah's identity is not anything else but the Lord and him alone. So he said, I'm from this town, but you know what? I am the man of God. Turn with me to 2 Kings, the first chapter. There are several times Elijah says about who he is. Let me read it for you. He says this in verse 10. Said Elijah answered the captain, If I am a man of God, May fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. You don't want to be in that group, right? <laughs> Going up to capture Elijah, the man of God. He says, I am the, if I am the man of God, let fire come down and burn. He knew his identity. His identity is that he is the man of God. The second thing that I want you to take you into your heart is this. Not only our identity is important, secondly, our authority is important. In what, at what authority that Elijah did everything that we talk about in the book of 1 Kings from chapter 17 all the way to 2 Kings, there's a story about what are the things that Elijah did. Where did he get this kind of authority from? He did not get the authority from anybody else. Any other man did not appoint him for this job. He has got that authority from the Lord himself. Hallelujah. His authority came from God alone. All of us. We have authority. Do you know what kind of authority God has given us through Jesus Christ? He said, all authority after the resurrection, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he gave them the authority to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You and I are set free for a purpose. Amen. Not only to give you an identity of who you are, but also to give authority in your life. Hallelujah. Think about it. Power crazy people in this world. There were 15 times the election was going on just to keep that position. Think about it, right? How many of you watched that, right? If you, if you know what you're, what's going on in this country, they were, you know, we know Republican Party has won uh, the House and they have to select the leader so that uh, they can have a Speaker of the House. Now, uh, the Speaker of the House that they want it to be is not having enough Boat. There came to a time, it was one boat less. Think about it. So it was keep on going and keep on going. Authority is important. Power is important. In this world, there are people who have so much power. Education gives people power. Money gives power. But the real power I'm talking to you, all of us have, we have power in the name of our God. Hallelujah. You and I have power in the name of the Lord. Amen. Bible says in the name of Jesus, the demons will what? Flee. Flee. Amen. 
No demon can stand against the power and authority of the name of Jesus. We have to be thanking God for loving us so much by sending his son. And he has taken over power over death. And he has got authority over heaven and earth. Everything under the name of Jesus. He is the head for the church and we are the body. Our authority comes from him. Hallelujah. So for Elijah, he recognized that his identity is because God called him. His, his power and authority is because God's presence was in his life. There was challenges after challenges Elijah has faced in his life. All through his life, he has faced up, faced opposition after opposition. You know, you don't want to live as a citizen during the time of King Ahab because he's the worst king of all. He married a worst person, Jezebel, to be the queen, and they both together led the whole country of northern kingdom of Israel into idolatry. All abominations were done. And there were idolatry worship everywhere. And what happened here? God just chose this person and gave him an identity and gave him the authority. When Elijah comes, everybody is scared. <laughs> if you just read the first chapter of 2 Kings, it says there are three times that King Ahab sent an army with a captain and 50 people. Burn down. Second time he sent... 50 people and a captain burned down. The third time, they were sending 50 people and a captain. And the captain said, please don't burn us. We know that you are a powerful man. You have all authority. You can call fire from above. Think about it. How hard it is to make a fire. If you have a, what we call? Matchbox. Matchbox. <laughs> It's easy for us. Think about those, in those days, people, how hard it was for people to start a fire. But for Elijah, it's not a problem at all. All he has to do is what? Call on the name of the Lord who made the heaven and earth to bring fire from above. Because I, if I am the man of God, let fire come down. It happened not only one time, several times in the life of Elijah. That God proved that I have given him the authority over everything. What kind of authority Jesus gave us? He has gave, given us the authority over the scorpions, the snakes. Praise the Lord. He can step on it and walk over it. It means all these demons can come under the power. They cannot, they cannot even stand when you pronounce the name of Jesus. So hold the name of Jesus so dear and, and closer to you because without the powerful name of Jesus, you are nobody. Praise the Lord. I am nobody because we have that authority in the powerful name of Jesus. In the early church, they said there is no other name other than the name of Jesus. He alone is appointed as the Savior for the humanity. Hallelujah. There is no other name. There are people, leaders, smart people in this world that have come up. But no one is equal to the authority and the power of the one and only Son of God. That is Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Would you raise your hand and thank the Lord that we have authority. Sometimes we have authority and we don't want to use it. <laughs> we just want to have it as what? Well. As a show, say, hey, I'm a Christian. I can speak in tongues. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bona fide. No. You have authority so that you can make use of it to glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And if you read the early church, that's what they did. They were able to drive up demons and establish the kingdom of God in every town that the apostles went. Wherever the, the disciples went, they were changing the world upside down. Not because of anything else. It's not because of the great money that they had. No, they didn't have anything. Peter and John, when they went on this first you know, time, the time of prayer to Jerusalem, to the temple, on the wayside, there was a man who was sitting there. He could not walk. Everybody knows. He was a beggar sitting right there. And they were, he was looking at Peter and, and John as they were going. He said, give me some money. 
Peter looked at him and said what? Silver and gold. Silver and gold I don't have. But something else I have. In the name of Jesus. He hold his hands in the name of, powerful name of Jesus. Stand up and walk. This man not only just stood up and he started jumping everywhere. Hallelujah. When God has given authority and you begin to use it in the proper way, his name will be glorified. Hallelujah. That man was not praising Peter and John. He was praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the Lord who gives us authority for healing for any other thing. It is God and God alone. Yes. Authority. Our identity is in him. Our authority is in him. And our security is in the Lord. Do you know you are secured? You are sealed. Praise the Lord. The Bible says you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is just a foretaste of what is to come. Mm. Wow. That means security. If you accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior, you have this seal of God's approval in you. That does not mean you can live as you please. You have now have a responsibility, what? To live a life that is pleasing to God because he has put a seal, his seal, on you. So our security is in the Lord. What is the security that Elijah had? Do you know on him, he don't have power over nothing. His security is in the presence of the Lord. When Jezebel said, okay, you killed all the prophets of Baal, she got so mad. When a woman gets mad, get away from the house. <laughs> Praise God. Because you, know, you cannot tolerate. Sometimes it's just too hard. The way of doing things. Jezebel was the master of all this just anger. She, she challenged Elijah and said, you know what? I'm going to catch you. I'm going to do more than what you have done to my prophets of Baal. And that challenge scared the powerful prophet who brought fire from up. <laughs> if Elijah can run like that, think about the condition of anybody, right? So be careful. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I love you, Ruby. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that Elijah was running for his life. And he ran and he got tired. And he said, I better die than face this woman Jezebel. I better die. And he went down under the tree shade and went, began to sleep. He said, you know, I better die. And then an angel came and fed him. God told him, get up and go. And he was running with the strength. And then he ran to the top of the Mount of God. Because he knew his security is in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He was running for his life, but he knew where to go. And he went. There was a fire. There was earthquake. There was, you know, all these horrible things happened. And Elijah did not even come out. And then suddenly, a gentle breeze. Hallelujah. He heard Elijah come out. Then Elijah came out. Because he was for sure his security is in the presence of the Lord. The moment he engulfed, he was engulfed by the presence of the Lord. He did not worry about Jezebel anymore, right? He was completely soaked by the presence of the Lord. And God said, what are you doing here? He said, God, you know, she killed all the prophets. And I'm the only one left behind. And I am just hiding. God said, you have no idea what I have. Sometimes we think we are all that. <laughs> when God has everything under control. Hallelujah. That is why I love this word. He is sovereign God. I love so much the word sovereign God. Sovereign means he is in control of everything. All of our lives are controlled by God. So we don't have to worry about nothing. No wonder Jesus came along and said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about anything. 
By worrying, you cannot even change your white hair into black hair. Somebody said, yes, we can. <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> you wait for some more days, it'll be gone. you will back into white again, right? You try again, it'll back into white again. Jesus said this, he said, by worrying, you cannot even do that. So what is the point of worrying when you and I have a sovereign God who is in charge of all of our lives? He is our everything. He is our security. Hallelujah. In Him we find our rest. Yeah. He is more than able for us. So His authority is important. More than that, we have to know and seek His presence more than anything else. Seek me and you will find, find me. So the problem is not with God. God is closer to us. But we don't want to seek Him. If we seek Him, if we seek Him early in the morning, you will find me, Bible says, right? When we have our heart turned towards God and seek His presence, not His power, not His anything else, but we want His presence. I want His presence. You know, I love Ruby and I want her presence. You know, when I sit in my office and, and I'm thinking about, okay, what Ruby is doing right now? And I get up and just go. And I said, wow. More than anything else, I desire her presence. It's the same way the lover of our soul, he, wa he wants us to desire him. He wants us to want him. And that is what seeking God is all about. Seeking God is not for anything else. Seeking God is so that we can enjoy his presence in our life. Our security depends on his presence. Praise the Lord. Elijah knew that. He ran during the time of danger, but he was encouraged by the presence of mighty God. When God began to talk to him again, Elijah, you go and anoint this person. You go and anoint that person. You go and anoint this person. There was another prophet. There was another king. There was another king. It was Elijah doing all that even after he was challenged by Jezebel. How did it happen? It happened because... He was in the presence of God. When you and I wait in the presence of God, things begin to change. Hallelujah. As long as we seek Him more and more, and when we feel His presence engulfs us, then we will be able to know for sure our security is for sure. Because if we don't have our security, what is the point of coming together and worship? Praise the Lord. What is the point of even praying? Our security, we know when we die, we are going to be in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Paul had that confidence. He said, when I close my eyes, I open my eyes in the presence of the Lord. He holds everything about us. Our desire is for Him. You know, Lord, I long for you. I long to have your presence engulf me, Lord. And that is more than enough for all of us. Amen. The richest person in the world cannot even come closer when God's presence engulfs you. Hallelujah. Seek Him and you will find Him. The fourth one. The fourth one after security. The fourth one is the destiny. What is the destiny of Elijah? Do you know what is the destiny of Elijah was? Elijah did not know that. Elijah was going and, you know, calling out fire from here. And he, the ministry was so powerful. And then after being in the presence of God, Almighty God revealed it to him. Elijah, I am going to take you into my presence. That is your destiny. You're not going to die like any other person. But you're going to be with me. How it's going to be happening. I'm going to send... My chariots, <laughs> hallelujah, my chariots of fire from above and I'm going to send it and there's going to be a whirlwind. whirlwind and you will be minding your own business but you will be captured and taken into my presence. That is the destiny for Elijah. Do you know what is our destiny is? It's the same thing. Do you know that? <laughs> If the Lord comes today, what is our destiny? Whoop. 
And this is why we sing this song. I'll fly away, oh glory. Yes, I'll fly away. Praise the Lord. We need to know our destiny. Our destiny is hidden in the Lord. When Jesus comes, and then we will appear with him. I have no idea how to explain that. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. And I want to read it and finish it for you. Colossians. Paul was writing this. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. It says, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Do you understand what Paul is saying here? He's saying exactly what I was saying. He said, you died and your life is now hidden in Christ in God. And then when he, that is Christ, when he appears, we will also appear with him. Hallelujah. That is going to be our destiny. Hallelujah. So live your life on this earth knowing that your destiny is not here, but with him. Hallelujah. With him forever. So that is the destiny for Elijah. Now we know that Elijah was taken in the whirlwind. But that didn't end his destiny yet. Bible says in the Malachi, it says, I will send the prophet Elijah again. Jesus himself said when he talked about John the Baptist, the Elijah has already come. You guys don't know about it. He talks about John the Baptist. But it is just a pre-appearance of Elijah. But later, if you'll find in the book of Revelation, there's going to be two witnesses that they are going to come and they are going to bring a message from the gospel and then they are going to bring fire from above and when they shut the heavens, it won't bring rain and they can change the water into blood. You all look like you never read it. <laughs> I'm not telling a story, it's right there in your Bible. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 11. <laughs> really, Pastor? You know, right here. Revelation chapter 11. <clears throat> Let me read it, okay? A little faster. Verse 1 onwards. Says, I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar and, the, and count the worshippers there, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months, that is three and a half years. And I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy for hundred and, I mean, 1,260 days, which is three and a half years. Clothed in sackcloth, these are the two olive trees, which represents the permanent presence of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And there are two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. So they are empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in the latter days when they come. Chapter 11, verse 5. If anyone tries to harm them, it says, Fire comes from their mouths and devour their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. Woo! How do you like to be burned in fire by these two powerful prophets? It's going to call out fire from above. Any enemy who stands against them will be burned down. Look at verse 6. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they were prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. That is why some scholars say these two witnesses are 
uh, are Moses and Elijah. Some other uh, you know, people say they are Enoch and Elijah because Enoch you know, walked with the Lord and he was no more. And then Elijah, he was taken up. And some others say, no, it is Moses and Elijah. I do not know who that is going to be, but they are going to be powerful witnesses for the Lord. Hallelujah. These two of them, there's going to come and they can bring fire from above and burn the enemies and they can talk and nobody can say anything against them. And they have the power to change the water into blood. Think about that, right? For a moment, they can bring any plagues they want to, to bring people under control. And this is going to happen during the half of the tribulation. And the rest of the half of the tribulation, and you will find that, the, that God is sending 144,000 witnesses, just like the other two. They are going to be sealed, and they are going to be empowered. They are going to go everywhere and preach the word of God, and people will be saved during that time. You talk about the revival in these last days. I don't know about it. The way things are going today, people are not even coming to church. People are not even coming to prayer meetings. If I call, you know, prayer meeting, how many of you will show up? You know, we are all busy. That is the way it is going to be. But you know what? When we pray, then the revival comes. When we don't do that, don't expect the revival. Praise the Lord. And the revival is going to be there during the time of this 144,000 uh, Jewish people just going everywhere and preaching the word by the anointing of the Spirit of God. They were sealed. Nothing can stop them. And the same, same way, the two witnesses, and some say it, one is Elijah and the other in Moses. Now, I do not know who that is going to be, but we know that these guys have done it before. Moses have brought all kinds of, Plague. you know, plagues to set the people from the bondage of Egypt. And, and here is Moses that changed the water into blood, right? And we know Elijah, what he has done. He has brought fire from above and he has, uh, he has just uh, done awesome things. Right here we see that he is powerful and, and that is going to be the destiny. And Bible says, if you continue to read, these are going to be killed and their body will be out there in the street. Nobody wants to bury them, but the whole world will see them. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible, right? There is one uh, soccer game is going on somewhere else, <laughs> the other side of the world. Everybody's, you know, everybody's cable TV can just watch everything that's going on. And here come, <clears throat> Massey, how many of you know Massey? You don't know Massey, right? And, and, and awesome, you know, he just played this wonderful football and then just finally it just puts the goal and our mind is so, whoa, you know, so excited about. If that is possible, think about a day is going to come. These two witnesses are going to be in the streets dead. For three and a half days, they are not going to be buried. The whole world will be so happy that they are killed. Then, the Bible says, suddenly God sends the Spirit back into their lives. And they will come up. And they will just be taken in the clouds. Mm. Wow. The only other person that I know was taken in the clouds is Jesus. Hallelujah. He was taken into the presence of the Lord. And he is interceding for us. So our destiny is in the Lord. So don't worry about everything that's going on in this world, but make sure that you connect with Him always. Hallelujah. Amen. Day after day, you make sure that you are connected with Him. Talk to Him. Allow Him to talk to you. Strengthen you. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. nothing. Abide with me and I in you. Every day, talk to the Lord. Let him minister to you, strengthen you. Because in this world, I have no idea how the worldly people are surviving without any purpose in their lives. But we know the purpose that God has created us is to save us and set us free so that we can worship him and honor him. Hallelujah. So be like Elijah. All this was accomplished because the Bible says we are all just like Elijah. He was a common man just like us. But he prayed and he stopped the rain. And then he prayed again and he brought back the rain. 
such a powerful, fervent prayer is what God wants us to do in this year 2023. God wants us to grow deeper and stronger in Him, trusting Him more. When you pray, things happen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even this morning, when Ruby got up this morning, she was not even ready. She could not even talk. Her face was swelled up. And she could not even talk. I was getting ready and I told her, hey, Ruby, if you're not feeling good, just stay home. She said, you know, I'm going to pray. So I reached out to her and prayed for her and said, Lord, just cover her with your presence. And she could not even talk this morning. I'm telling you, as what God can do. And I came to Sunday school. And I was sitting there and I was just still praying for her. And after a few minutes, you know, I sent her a message. Are you okay? <laughs> she said, I'm getting ready. Woo! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer works. Church, I'm telling you, prayer works. Hallelujah. When you call on me, Jesus said this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. So I encourage you this morning, this uh, afternoon probably, that you have to grow in the Lord. Let the Bible become your most important source. Gobble it every single day. Hallelujah. Let the manna from above just fill your heart and soul every single day. Make the word of God your own. You know, make it, make it so powerful in your life. Let the word of God speak to you every single day. And grow deeper and stronger in Him. Seek Him. And increase your prayer time. Praise the Lord. But a day is going to come when he shows up, when that trumpet sounds, then we will not have time here on this earth anymore. We'll be gone with him. Hallelujah. Just like Elijah did. Bible says, when Paul talks about it, he says, and the dead in Christ will raise first. Yes. <laughs> and we who are alive in him will be what? Up. will be transformed and caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I mean, it is going to be awesome. Don't lose it. There are a lot of preachers who say, you know what, it's not going to happen. And churches are turning to become a, a, a show place, you know, a, it's a community place. That is not it. It's a place of worship and prayer. Hallelujah. We wanted to keep it that way. Jesus said, my father's house is a house of prayer for all people. So we come here and seek God and pray and seek him and worship him. We need to continue to worship the Lord more than ever before. The world goes bad. Don't worry about it. The righteous will continue to be more righteous. The Bible calls us to live a more righteous world. Uh, live a more righteous life in your day-to-day -day life. Praise the Lord. I am done. Uh, you know, when a pastor finishes preaching, he knows that he has done a job. All the things that God has just spoken to him is just given to the people. It is your job now to make it your own. Go home and read Elijah. Go home and read, you know, what the Bible says that we talked about. And keep yourself secured in the presence of God. And let him continue to lead your life. And because your destiny is in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. What do you bow your head this morning? <clears throat> Maybe you have lost your way. Maybe you have, you know, taken it easy. I tell you, Jesus loves you still. He cares for you. You can talk to him. He's a faithful God. He never fails. You can always come to him and he will minister to you, encourage you, build you up. If you are broken, he can heal you. If you're lost, he wants to reach out to you and find you. He's a merciful God, a loving God. He wants to have you to be with him. That is going to be your destiny. You're going to be with him forever. What a hope we have in Christ Jesus. I want to pray for you this morning. Would you have a little talk with Jesus this morning? And tell him, Lord, my identity is in you. My authority is in your presence. My security is in you. Lord, more than anything, my destiny is in you. You created me, Lord. You are sustaining me, Lord. And 
you know my future. So hold me, Lord, in your hand and walk with me in my journey.